In this video, we talk about how the rate of a chemical reaction depends on temperature. So far, uh, what we have described about the rates of chemical reaction is the definition of the rate and how the rate depends on the concentration. Uh, but we also know that the rate of a chemical reaction depends on temperature. It's quite customary that when you elevate the temperature of a reaction, generally the rate is higher, the reaction goes, for, goes faster. Okay, so with, with what we know, uh, the question is how, how does the temperature enter uh, the rate? Well, uh, the rate law, which is what we know how to do so far, uh, can be generally uh, described as this for a reaction with just one reagent. Uh, notice that this uh, uh, expression actually has no apparent dependence on the temperature, and that is because uh, the temperature enters through the rate constant. Okay, so all of the things that we have done about the rate law here were at constant temperature. Now, if we were to change the temperature, the only thing that actually changes in this rate law would be the rate constant. It is the rate constant, uh, therefore that depends on the temperature. On the way that the, the rate constant depends on, on the temperature was studied by Arrhenius, uh, and uh, what Arrhenius found is that he was able to measure the rate constant as a function of uh, various temperatures for various chemical reactions, and he found that most chemical reactions actually uh, had the same functional form for the dependence of the rate constant on the temperature. And this functional form was like this. K, and the rate constant, is equal to a pre-exponential factor that we call A, and then uh, the exponential of minus the activation energy, or RT. Okay, and this is generally written as this E to the minus EA over RT. All right, so here you have how the rate constant uh, depends on temperature. This is an expression that we call phenomenological, in the sense that when Arrhenius was finding uh, how to fit this data, he was trying a variety of expressions, and this happened to be the one that actually fit the data the best. However, it was not very clear at first uh, what this uh, pre-exponential factor A meant, and what this uh, uh, other factor, the activation energy, what that meant as well. R is simply the gas constant. All right, so what we're going to do uh, now is introduce a little bit what that pre-exponential factor um, and the uh, activation energy, what they mean. Okay, even though we'll talk uh, about this to a much, much deeper extent in the next chapter. Now, before we actually explain what A and the activation energy are, uh, we're going to say that this actually expression can be linearized okay, by taking logarithms. Okay, in this case, is uh, the natural logarithm. And notice that this expression is going to turn into the following. Minus e A over R, 1 over T. Okay, and this is a linear expression if you, plot, if you plot the natural log of the rate constant on the y-axis and 1 over t on the x-axis. If that's the case, then you can determine um, the pre-exponential factor uh, from the intercept and the activation energy from the slope. Okay, so this is the way that we're actually going to be uh, generating these values of the activation energy, activation energy of the pre-exponential factor. And then we measure uh, the rate constant as a function of temperature but then uh, we take logarithms of these and the inverse of the temperature, and uh, when we plot natural log of k as a function of 1 over t, we should expect to find uh, a line okay, uh, in which the slope is going to be equal to the minus activation energy over r, and this intercept is going to provide us um, the natural log of the pre-exponential factor. Right, so in the next video we explain what the uh, pre-exponential factor and the activation energy uh, mean.